Our last talk is uh, one of the great long-term cohort studies uh, done by the Danish group. And you're already here, so go, go right ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You're already on. Good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here today in order to present to you the results of our study on the long-term absolute risk of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, grade 3, or cervical cancer, among women tested for high-risk and low-risk HPV. Oops. There. This is just the disclosure slide. These are the potential conflicts of interest of my co-authors. I don't have any conflicts of interest of my own. And the sponsors mentioned here did not influence the study design or the analysis and interpretation of our data. Okay. The background of our study is that very few prospective studies have analyzed the risk of high-grade SIN after a low-risk HPV infection. And to our knowledge, no previous studies have used the Hybrid Capture 2 low-risk probe. Currently, prevalence and case control studies indicate that low-risk HPV types play no major role in cervical carcinogenesis. And accordingly, current screening guidelines for cervical cancer do not recommend testing for low-risk HPV types. Never, nevertheless, a survey among pap test providers in the United States showed that among those pap test providers who used HPV testing in their practice, 25 to 31% tested for low-risk HPV types. And this could be caused in part by an insecurity among clinicians as to whether low-risk HPV types are indeed unrelated to cervical cancer. On this background, the aim of our study was to assess the long-term absolute risk of SYN3 or cervical cancer according to high-risk and low-risk HPV status at baseline. From 2002 to 2005, we collected a total of 40,399 consecutive liquid-based cytology samples from the Department of Pathology at Villaur Hospital in Denmark. This department receives and analyzes all samples, all cervical samples that have been collected as part of organized or opportunistic screening in the greater Copenhagen area. In Denmark, cervical cancer screening by cytology is recommended every three years beginning at age 23. And we generally have high participation rates in screening, and there's also quite widespread opportunistic screening. In daily clinical practice, the cell material remaining after the cytological examination of the liquid-based smear is discarded, but for the purposes of this study, the residual cell material was instead collected by the Danish Cancer Society Research Center in order to be tested for HPV. The HPV testing was performed at the University Hospital of Tübingen in Germany using the Hybrid Capture 2 high-risk and low-risk probe. The high-risk probe is designed to detect 13 high-risk types, whereas the low-risk probe targets five low-risk types, which are types 6, 11, 42, 43, and 44. Subsequently, the women were followed up by a Danish national pathology register called the Pathology Data Bank. The Pathology Data Bank is a nationwide pathology register which contains information on all cervical cytology, biopsies, and cones performed in Denmark. All the pathology departments in the country report procedures and diagnosis to the Pathology Data Bank through an online and real-time reporting system. Correct linkage of the women in the cohort to the pathology data bank was ensured by each woman's unique personal identification number. This personal identification number is assigned to all residents in Denmark. It contains information on age and sex and is used universally in the Danish society and all health registries. By linking women in the cohort with the pathology data bank, we were able to collect information on all previous and subsequent cervical, cytological, and histological diagnoses of the women. We followed them for a histological diagnosis of SYN3 or worse until March 2012, which meant that the maximum follow-up time was 9.7 years. 
um, in the present analysis, we wanted to analyze women um, who were participating in routine screening, as opposed to women being followed for a previous abnormal uh, test result. And therefore, we excluded women with any abnormal findings on cytology or histology in the previous year. In order to study incident cervical lesions, we also excluded women with a high-grade lesion or worse at baseline. This left a total of 38,645 women with adequate hybrid CAPTA-2 tests and no high-grade lesions at baseline. Of these, 3,658 women had no cervical examinations during follow-up, which meant that we had 34,987 women to include in our analysis. The women covered a wide age range from 14 to 90 years at baseline, with a median age of 36 and a half years. At baseline, 3.4% of the women had a concurrent high-risk and low-risk HPV infection. 16.1% had a high-risk HPV infection without a concurrent low-risk infection. And 3.5% of the women had a low-risk HPV infection without a concurrent high-risk infection. Throughout follow-up, we um, identified a total of 751 cases of SYN3 and 47 cases of invasive cervical cancer. So this brings me to the central results of our analysis. In this uh, figure, you can see the absolute risk of SYN3 or worse during follow-up according to high-risk HPV status at baseline. This is irrespective of the woman's low-risk HPV status. As you can see uh, in the red line, women who were high-risk HPV positive were at increased risk of SYN3 or worse compared to high-risk HPV negative women, with an absolute risk at five years of 7.9% and at the end of follow-up of 19.3%. In contrast, women who were high-risk HPV negative at baseline were at low subsequent risk of SYN3 or worse, with an absolute risk at five years of 0.4%, and 1.6% at the end of follow-up. We then stratified the analysis for age and looked separately at women younger than 30 years and women aged 30 years and older. We found that high-risk HPV-negative women above the, uh, of age 30 years or older were at very low subsequent risk of SYN3 or worse, with an absolute risk of fi at five years of 0.3%. Furthermore, the women who were younger than 30 years were also at low subsequent risk of SYN3 or worse, with an absolute risk at five years of 0.6%. We then looked at the risk associated with a low-risk HPV infection. This figure shows uh, the absolute risk of SYN3 or worse among women with a high-risk HPV infection alone at baseline and among women with a high-risk and low-risk HPV infection at baseline. As you can see, the risk was virtually identical in these two groups of women. And this means that having a low-risk HPV infection in combination with a high-risk HPV infection did not seem to increase the risk above the risk associated with a high-risk HPV infection alone. When looking at the women that were low-risk HPV positive at baseline, that means with a low-risk HPV infection alone, we found in this group of women, we found only 13 cases of SYN3 and no cases of invasive cervical cancer during follow-up. And as you can see in this uh, figure, the absolute risk among women with a low-risk HPV infection alone, this is shown by the blue graph, was very low throughout follow-up and was very similar to the risk among HPV-negative women. Thus, yeah, at five years, the risk among women with a low-risk HPV infection alone was 0.6%, and among HPV-negative women, it was 0.4%. At the end of follow-up, the risk among women with a low-risk HPV infection alone was 2.2%, and, at the, at, and among HPV-negative women, it was 1.6%. Thus, this means 
that having a low-risk HPV infection at baseline did not in a clinically relevant way predict subsequent cervical disease. And when we stratified this analysis for age, that did not alter our results. So in conclusion, our results support that women who test negative for high-risk HPV remain at low absolute risk of SYN3 or worse during a follow-up period of nearly 10 years. These results are in line with previous studies, which we've also heard through this conference, and they support that implementing high-risk HPV testing in primary screening will allow a safe extension of screening intervals among high-risk HPV-negative women to at least five years. And in our cohort, this was true among women aged 30 years and older, but women below the age of 30 also remained at low risk of SYN3 or worse at five years of follow-up. Furthermore, our results corroborate previous findings that low-risk HPV infection does not increase the risk of SYN3 or worse. And therefore, the, risk, um, the results from this large prospective study of nearly 35,000 women who were followed for 9.7 years with very little loss to follow-up support the recommendation that screening against cervical cancer should not include testing for low-risk HPV types. I would like to thank all my collaborators at the Danish Cancer Society Research Center and elsewhere. And I would like to thank you for your time and attention.